While a lot of us are deep in the Midgard's Bloat Blues, some of us are coping with it by talking about bands that we would love to see at next year's festival already, even though it's only been a little over a week since this year's festival ended. So in this video, I am going to join so many of you in coping with the Midgar's Bloat Blues by talking about bands that I would love to see at next year's festival. So without further ado, here are 10 bands the Nordic Sound Channel would love to see play at Midgar's Bloat 2024. So, in no particular order, at all, I'm going to list 10 bands that I have seen live or would love to see live that I know would fit in perfectly at Midgard's Blow. A little disclaimer first, this is in no particular order, but second off, these are bands that I would love to see on the open air stages. I've got my own special little list of bands I'd love to see play in the Gilda Holland that I'm going to make uh, its own video for. So this is really just for the open air bands like metal rock, that sort of thing, that would do really well on either the Valhalla or the Kalpanger stage. So without further ado, let's get started on one of my favorite bands I've ever seen live, Visigoth. Visigoth is dorky Dungeons and Dragons power metal at its finest. Now despite Visigoth like pretty confidently asserting their place as the Dungeons and Dragons power metal band uh, and definitely take a lot of inspiration from Manila Road uh, and bands in that vein, I don't want this theme or gimmick to get in the way of the fact that these guys are pretty killer performers and musicians. Uh, Alyssa and I saw them perform at Fire in the Mountains 2022 and something to note is that they were definitely one of the favorite sets of the whole festival and that's really impressive considering two facts. One, their drummer got COVID and they last minute had to cancel, but then last minute uncanceled uh, and their producer stepped in to play drums for them. But even more importantly, their singer was hung over as crap for their set because he thought they weren't playing. Despite both of these things, and also the generator went off mid set. The singer, I'm blanking on his name, but he said something incredible to me that really sealed them as one of my favorite live bands is, Despite all this crap happening, and you could tell he was really dying in the Wyoming sun, he said, sometimes these things just happen, but that's rock and roll. I still get goosebumps because like this band did not let anything get in the way of them just putting on a good fucking time at Fire in the Mountains. So on top of me loving their music, these guys have such an awesome like performance ethic, and I just think the Midgar's Blood would embrace the hell out of these guys. They're just a lot of fun, super sweet guys too, and I would just love to see them at Midgar's Blood 2024. Next up on this list is Vancouver's own Wormwitch. Do you miss Serpents Unleashed era Skeleton Witch before Chance Garnett got kicked out of the band? Well, Wormwitch, despite having no common members, are definitely a spiritual successor to that era of Skeleton Witch to me. Serpents Unleashed is an album that I listened to way too much the year that it came out, and I've always been wondering since Chance Garnett got kicked out of the band if there would ever be a band like that. And a few years later, I stumbled upon Wormwitch and I found it. Straight blackened thrash with riffs that just crush your face in. And they just have such an awesome energy that would fit perfectly well at Midgar's Blood. I would love to see this band play next year. Now, as a huge Doom Metal guy, I'm gonna have a couple Doom bands on this list, uh, even though that I know Doom is not everyone's cup of tea, but Lord Mountain is a very Black sabbath -y Doom Metal band that was formed in 2014 that just this year put out their first full-length album called The Oath. It's full of Norse mythology references in it, and they're just like a good old-fashioned just heavy metal band. Uh, I was just listening to them this morning, and I was like, yeah, these guys would do really well at Midgard's Bloat, because even though Midgar's Bloat is more of like a black metal festival, um, a lot of people do mention getting blast beat fatigue. Put down in the comments if you agree with that at all, or if you think there's no such thing as blast beat fatigue. But I do think there's a lot of value, uh, and apparently so do the organizers, at having bands other than black metal play at these things. Uh, and I think that Lord Mountain is just thematically on point, and it would just be a lot of fun to see just like an old school sounding metal band play at next year's festival. So. Would definitely love to see Lord Mountain. Gonna take a break from heavy metal for a second and just say again, even though I said this last year, 
how much I would love to see Hoovendruven play at Midgard's Bloke. They were one of the original, like, Swedish folk rock fusion groups, and 30 years later, they are still killing it. For those of you who were at Einherjar's 30th anniversary celebration this year, just think Hoovendruven's been at this for the same amount of time. Uh, they are definitely legends in the Swedish and just general Scandinavian folk rock scene, and especially if you guys loved Gangar this year, some of the members of Hoovendruven are sort of like guiding them or helping with their production and their, their uh, recording processes for their albums. So if you liked Gangar and you want to see more of this stuff in that vein, definitely Hoovendruven would be awesome to see at Midgard Split next year. Especially considering a couple of the members themselves are old school metalheads. If you uh, watch my interview I did with them last year, uh, Bjorn, the drummer, pretty unapologetic old school metalhead, you know, super into Saxon and bands like that. So I think it'd be really awesome to see some of the legends of Scandinavian folk rock get their time in the sun at Midgard's Bloat 2024. Now that I've said my piece on Hoovendruven, let's get back into the rest of this list, which is heavy metal from here on out. And let's get going with a very unsurprising recommendation from me, from those who know me. Wolves in the Throne Room would be awesome to see at Midgar's Blood. Believe me when I say even those of you who shrug them off as Crystal Girlfriend's metal, I don't even know why that's a bad thing. Uh, I mean, I'm married to someone who has my whole apartment covered in rocks and crystals, but that's because she was a geologist. But anyway, Wolves in the Throne Room put on just a transcendental experience at Fire in the Mountains. They dress up their whole stage in like skulls and ivy and moss. And it's that same sort of like ritual performance that typically Midgard's Bloat loves to see. So Wolves in the Throne Room at Midgard's Bloat 2024, especially to round off their primordial arcana era as they've called it, I think that would be a pretty cool send-off for them to be able to play that ritual set at Midgard's Bloat 2024. And again, I know a lot of people shrug them off as not true black metal, but uh, I think that's all the more reason to have them at Midgard's Bloat. And speaking of killer fire in the mountain sets that I would love to see come back around for Midgar's Bloat 2024, the mighty Yob. Yes, I know it's another doom metal band, but there's more to Yob than doom metal, okay? And I will admit, I did not understand Yob at first either. Even for the few days leading up to their set in Fire in the Mountains, people were wearing Yob shirts, people were buying Yob vinyls, people were going on and on about Yob, and me and Alyssa were sitting there like, what the hell is a yob? I don't get it. And it turned out to be another My Dying Bride situation for me, where once they went on, there was just something about them that was just like magic seeing live. And I'll use this word again, like with Wolves in the Throne Room, it was just like, just a little transcendental to it at the risk of sounding pretentious. But seeing Yob live is pretty cool. And Mike Scheidt is just an incredible singer, performer, and songwriter. I think it'd be pretty neat to see them play at Midgar's Bloat because they definitely have this spiritual esoteric side to them that's not overt like it is with Wolves in the Throne Room, but just something about their general vibe I think would be very well accepted in Midgard's Blood. Now for the next one, I am going to jump on the bandwagon and Parrot, sorry Cricket, a suggestion that I've already seen thrown around quite a bit for next year, Corpiclani. I would love to see Corpiclani live, never had the chance, and I just know that it would be so much fun to have them kick off the festival like Fintroll did this year at least. Especially because their latest album just slays. And uh, I really feel like that's, a, that's really a once in a lifetime band for an American like myself to see. Because I feel like they don't tour the States very often. So I would love to see, on behalf of all Finnish folk metal loving Americans, I would love to see Corpiclani at next year's Midgard's Blood. Next up on this list is a band and a musician that is just very special to me just because Austin is such an incredible guy. Panopticon is American black metal at its finest. If you have listened to his album Kentucky and felt nothing, then I don't trust you. But in all seriousness, Panopticon's music is awesome. He's got a new album coming out this year. It's just the perfect setup for him to play a killer set at Midgar's Blow 2024. And even further than that, you probably wouldn't know this from looking at his music on a service level, but Austin himself is pretty intertwined with like the Nordic music scene, especially like the neo-pagan heathen side of things. So I do think that he'd be a really good bet at Midgar's Blood if, if I'm going to try and convince you guys that this is anything more than me just wanting to see Panopticon for my own personal reasons uh, at Midgar's Blood 2024. But then again, this is my list. So moving right along is a lesser known band that played an awesome set at Fire in the Mountains that even Jonas uh, Lorenzen uh, mentioned in my very first interview with him. Obsequia, 
Obsequie. They're like this medieval folk metal band that put on just a killer set at Fire in the Mountains. And knowing how open Midgar's Bloat is to that more esoteric side of heavy metal, uh, it would be really it would be really awesome to see them play again, um, especially at Midgar's Bloat. I think it's a really good setting for them. Now for number ten, some of you might recognize from my Cascadian Midsummer video. And uh, for those of you who are like, oh, I thought you didn't like Cascadian Midsummer, no, I made it very clear that I loved Cascadian Midsummer as a music festival. All right, and Drouth put on probably the best set at Cascadian Midsummer, um, besides Panopticon. I already gushed over that. Drouth walked up onto that stage, gave it their all, and completely crushed face. Drouth's new album, I think it's their first album that's out, is called Excerpts from a Dread Liturgy. It's just like, these guys just like, they get heavy metal, right? Their riffs are incredible, their stage presence is awesome, and they were just, they were really nice guys too. And so even if it's a bit of a Hail Mary to have them play at Midgard's Blow 2024, this is at least my little way of recommending some of you guys who are into this style of music, go check out Drouth. Excerpts from a Dread Liturgy is just amazing front to back. Go check it out. It would be awesome to see this band at Midgar's Blow. And so guys, these are the 10 bands that I would love to see at Midgar's Blow 2024. But if there are any bands that you would love to see that I have not mentioned here, go down to the comments, uh, leave your recommendations down below, and let's have an awesome time coping with our Midgar's Bloat Blues by talking about the bands that we would love to see next year. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Hope some of these bands you guys agree with, or at least I have introduced you to some new ones to check out. Um, but of course, that is the goal of this channel is to just spread the good word of music. All right. So you guys take care. Thank you for watching. Leave your recommendations down below, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.